It's been almost exactly one year since my last video, so it's about time I caught you up on how Jogglebot's going. From the earliest prototypes, through countless tweaks and revisions, each iteration has steadily increased Jogglebot's abilities. Until now, finally, Jogglebot can actually juggle. Sure, Jogglebot doesn't always throw perfectly straight, or to the same height, or always at the right time, but sometimes it works. Jogglebot can also throw a single ball to itself, most of the time, as well as throwing a ball to me, which is a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Of course, there's a lot more work to be done here, but if I waited until Jogglebot was perfect before making this video, we would be waiting for quite some time. My goal for this video is to give you a clear picture of where we're at in the development of Jogglebot, as well as to feel you in on what's to come. Just like a human juggler, Jogglebot has an arm, a hand, and a brain. The hand does the catching and throwing, the arm moves the hand to where it needs to be, and the brain coordinates these movements. Let's explore these systems one by one, starting with the arm, the foundation of Jogglebot's agility. Jogglebot's arm is where it really starts to differ from a human juggler. Based on a six degree of freedom steward platform, Jogglebot's arm can move to any desired pose within its workspace. To actuate the arm, I'm using six custom linear actuators, which I showed off in my last video. The only changes I've made to these actuators since my previous video are to swap the Kevlar string for ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene, also known as Dyneema, and to control the actuators with O-Drive Pros, which allow for extremely precise control and monitoring of important properties like motor position, velocity, and current. Because linear actuator doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, I'll often refer to these actuators as legs throughout this video. Of course, constructing Jogglebot's arm wasn't as straightforward as slapping six of these actuators together and calling it a day. To get the most range of motion and precision out of Jogglebot's arm, the placement of these actuators is extremely important. I'm the first to admit that I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to building a robot, and my first attempt at finding the ideal arm geometry is a perfect example of this. Not knowing what's important for robot control, I naively sought to maximize the workspace of the arm without much concern for controllability or stability, leading to this super tall and skinny design that just looks wrong. After learning what a Jacobian is, I improved my simulation to include stability, arriving at the geometry we have now, where each pair of nodes are as close together as possible. This gives both a reasonably large range of motion while maintaining pose accuracy and stability in most poses. To attach the linear actuators to the platform, I'm using 3D printed universal joints that allow for a very wide range of motion. Anyone closely following this project may recall that at one point I swapped these joints out for magnetic joints, but once Jogglebot could move quickly enough, these joints were no longer strong enough and kept popping apart, leading to disastrous collapses. Oh. <laughs> Stop! Alright. <laughs> alright. I think that was alright. Let me move the camera down so you can see the... <laughs> To attach the linear actuators to the base, I'm using a magnetic ball joint surrounded by 3D printed bellows. This bellows is an important component as it prevents the actuator from twisting and tangling the cables, without inhibiting the rotation that we need. Next up is the hand, which is the only part that should be contacting the balls. Over the years, Jogglebot's hand has seen the most significant changes out of all the subsystems in the robot. Some of the highlights have been a hand motor attached to the base, no hand motor at all, with the hand being actuated passively as a result of the arm moving around, and an arm-mounted hand motor attached to a capstan drive. Eventually, a viewer named John suggested a different idea, to mount the hand to a linear guide rail driven by a pseudo-capstan drive. This design features a tiny brushless DC motor mounted to a piece of aluminium extrusion and attached to a 3D printed spool, around which a Dyneema string is tied and wrapped. The string then passes over a very clever tensioning mechanism before attaching to the hand itself. After adjusting the line tension, we're left with a virtually backlash-free hand, which can move extremely quickly and precisely, exactly what's needed for juggling. To know exactly where this motor is at all times, I've attached a dimetric magnet to the back of the motor, which the O-Drive's built-in encoder can read as angular position. Unfortunately, this motor isn't really designed for this, and I've had to use a tiny printed magnet holder that makes use of the main screw holding the motor together. Perhaps unsurprisingly, this tiny printed holder doesn't really like being spun at thousands of revolutions per second, and fairly quickly became extremely off-center. This is where JLC3DP comes in. With just a few clicks, I was easily able to upload the model for the part that I needed manufactured, get an instant quote, and confirm my order. 
The real-time order tracking was great for my monkey brain that insists on knowing exactly when all of my orders are coming in, and I was blown away by all the manufacturing options that they provide. After just a few days, the new parts arrived and they are perfect. Now made from aluminium, the new magnet holders are easily able to keep the magnet perfectly straight at any speed the hand motor will ever run at. I haven't bought a resin printer for fear of the hazards relating to the materials involved, but I have wished that I could get my hands on custom made parts that are made with greater precision than what my trusty Prusa can put out. There are a ton of parts in Juggerbot that could really afford to be made with greater precision than what I can make here, so I am extremely excited to be using JLC 3DP services more in the development of Juggerbot. If you want to see how JLC 3DP can help out with your projects, check out the link in the description where new customers can find up to $60 worth of coupons to use on your first few orders. If you're interested in seeing any of Jogglebot's hardware in greater detail, check out the link in the description to the on-shape model of the entirety of Jogglebot. You don't even need an account to view the model. This model is completely open source and you're more than welcome to create a copy of it to use as you see fit. Jogglebot's last main subsystem is its brain. Hosted on an NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano developer kit, I'm running a ROS2 network built from nodes that send information between each other. These nodes are generally responsible for a single task only making debugging and isolating problems significantly easier than if everything were in a single large script. Now don't get me wrong, ROS definitely has a fairly steep learning curve, but once I developed a bit of familiarity with it, creating new nodes to test new ideas became fairly straightforward, and the inbuilt logging tools combined with the ability to see how all the nodes are interconnected makes me extremely glad that I took the time to get familiar with it. To precisely control all seven of Jogglebot's motors, I'm using a CAN bus that can carry up to one megabit per second over just a single cable that's daisy chained between all the O drives. Similar to ROS, the CAN bus took me quite a while to understand and set up, but now that it's up and running, it's super robust and really flexible, allowing me to fairly easily add new custom messages to send between the nodes on the bus. As well as its main brain, Jogglebot also has a mini brain in the form of a Teensy 4.0 mounted to the back of the handrail. This Teensy is responsible for monitoring the CAN bus, reporting how many messages are being sent across it, as well as operating an inclinometer mounted to Jogglebot's handrail. This sensor very precisely measures inclination with respect to gravity, which, as you can probably imagine, is an extremely important sensor for Jogglebot, allowing it to know exactly which way is down and to automatically compensate for uneven ground. As for how I'm controlling the motors, all six linear actuators are run in trapezoidal trajectory mode, which basically means I can command a single target position and the O-drives will figure out the fastest way to get there given the set velocity and acceleration limits. This makes sending arm pose commands really simple as I can just send a single target pose and all the legs will get there as quickly as they can. This doesn't give me full control over the legs however. For example, I can't ensure that all the legs arrive at any specific time or that they even finish their movements together. And this is one area that I plan to improve in the future. Since the legs are only responsible for moving the hand around, we've so far been able to tolerate this somewhat imprecise method of control, but for the hand, that will not fly. Since there's only around two tenths of a second for the hand to throw or catch the ball, we need extremely precise control over it. To this end, John, yep, the same John from before, wrote a great trajectory generator that allows us to configure things like the mass of the hand and the ball, the length of the rail that the hand slides along, and how much buffer space we want on either end as well as setting how high the ball should be thrown and what sampling rate we intend to command the hand at. The generator then spits out the exact position that the hand should be at for each point, as well as what velocity we expect the motor to be at and how much torque it should be outputting. I've got this running at 500 hertz, which gives us extremely fine control over the hand. But how does Jogglebot see the balls? I hear you ask. Well, at the current moment, it doesn't. Jogglebot has no eyes. I do fully intend on giving Jogglebot eyes at some point in the future, but right now they're not mission critical and I'm still weighing up different options. This does mean the Jogglebot is effectively juggling blind, and in fact it actually has no way of knowing if it's even dropped a ball. This is an obvious problem with the robot and will need to be fixed at some point, but there are a couple more pressing problems that need to be addressed first. Perhaps the biggest problem with Jogglebot right now is the enormous amount of slop in the joints that connect the legs to the platform. The bearings in the platform side of the joint are a tiny bit loose, giving the joint far too much wiggle room. As far as I can tell, this is the largest contributor to the insane settling time that we observe when quickly moving the arm from one pose to another. I intend to resolve this by simply JB welding the bearings into the platform parts, fixing them in place once and for all. The next main problem is that the platform isn't perfectly identical to the model. I'm not really sure what happened here, but somehow the platform is around 3mm shorter than the CAD suggests. 
For better or worse, the platform is glued together now, so I can't really do anything to fix this issue directly, but hopefully we should be able to work around it. More on that in just a second. Relatedly, the linear actuators probably aren't identical lengths. These actuators are made of mostly 3D printed parts, and while I tried my best to make all the actuators the same, I wouldn't be too surprised to see differences of up to a millimetre or two between them. I previously didn't think this would be that big of an issue, but a long-time contributor by the moniker Hooks found a very interesting paper investigating how slight geometric errors in the construction of steward platforms affect the accuracy of the platform. Turns out, very small geometry errors of less than half a millimetre can lead to enormous platform pose errors of up to 15 millimetres. Thankfully, the paper presents one method for correcting these errors, and I intend to follow a similar process for Jugglebot. Now, anyone closely watching may have noticed that the timing looks a little bit off in the two ball juggling, and you would be absolutely correct in thinking that. The hand currently spends far too much time holding the ball, taking precious time that really ought to be used moving between the throwing positions. This means that the balls are only just barely caught, even with the two throw positions being so close together. I tried fixing this, but my code is cooked. And as I said before, if I waited until Juggerbot was perfect, we would be waiting quite a while for this video. Next along, the hand can definitely afford to be larger. I've really been making Juggerbot's life harder than it needs to be by giving it such a small hand, and I plan to explore different options for sizes and shapes that work well. If you have any thoughts at all about what size or shape hand could work well, please let me know in the comments. Now another big problem that I didn't realise until filming this video is that I really need to change the plug that connects the CAN cable to Juggerbot. The two ball juggling routine shakes Juggerbot so much that at one very poorly timed moment, the connector unplugged. This happened while the hand was throwing, so its last command was to keep on moving upwards. It very quickly hit the end stop, but not quickly enough to trigger any O-Drive errors. In a matter of seconds, the hand motor overheated and let out a lot of its precious magic smoke, so I need to replace this connector with something a little bit more robust. I'm leaning towards an aviation plug because I have one on hand, but I know there are countless connectors that I don't know about that might be even better. If you have any suggestions for what I could use here, please let me know in the comments. Now the final main problem plaguing Jogglebot right now is that its brain really needs an overhaul. A lot of contributors have been suggesting that I move to a state machine based brain, and I am slowly coming to agree with them. Such a system would keep track of the exact state the robot is in, what states it can then move into, and which states require passing through intermediary states first. As mentioned before, I'd also really like to improve the trajectory control of the legs to give even finer control over where they are at each instant in time. Right now, I'm simply commanding the arm to move between the left and right throw positions as soon as the ball has been thrown, leaving the fine control to the O-Drives to deal with. This leads to the legs arriving at their target lengths at different times, and I've just had to use trial and error to find a throw height and pattern width that gives enough time for the platform to reliably move between the two positions before the next ball needs to be caught. Needless to say, this approach will not work for more complex patterns. Now the final change I would like to make to the brain is to combine the arm and the hand movements so that they move in a more coordinated fashion. Right now they're being commanded completely independently of each other, but I think combining them together could lead to much smoother juggling. A few times throughout this video, I've mentioned things designed or suggested by other people, and it's important to me to be clear that this project has only progressed at the rate that it has thanks to the many people who have contributed designs, ideas, or money to this project. Your support truly means a lot to me, and you should all know that this project will be months behind where it currently is if it weren't for your support. So to everyone whose name is on screen now, thank you so much for helping this dream become a reality. While Jugglebot being able to juggle is a huge step forward, we're still only just getting started. The next major goals involve building a second Jugglebot and having them juggle three balls, then to beat me by juggling seven balls for at least 50 catches, something I haven't been able to do after many years of practice. Then, to beat the world record of 14 catches of 14 balls. Of course, we're a long way off those goals right now, and some of the things that will be addressed in the coming weeks and months include addressing the problems that I mentioned earlier, developing a proper pattern generator with full control of the timing of the hand and arm, what I really want here is the ability to command Jugglebot to perform any possible juggling pattern and have the generator automatically stitch the hand and arm trajectories to the end of the previous movement, enforcing smooth, continuous motion. I also plan to build a small ball launcher or dropper to assist in multi-ball juggling. Currently, I'm adding the second ball into the system just manually by hand, and this kind of works, but it is sketchy at best. Once those are all done to a satisfactory level, I plan to move Jugglebot to a different form factor. I really don't think I will ever build another version of Jogglebot that looks quite like the current version. 
My current pick for the next version is a Core XY arm with onboard hand that can pivot to make angled throws, but other possibilities include a cable robot or a delta robot. If you have any thoughts about what configuration of robot could work really well for juggling, please let me know in the comments. If this project interests you and you want to contribute in any way, the best way to provide financial support is through my Patreon, and if you want to suggest ideas, then I suggest checking out my Zulip site. Zulip is similar to Discord, but it allows for anyone to view the site without needing to make an account, which is something that I highly value in my efforts to make this project as open source as possible. Links to both my Patreon and the project's Zulip site are in the description. If you just want to follow along with the project, I plan to continue my weekly live streams on Fridays at 11am Australian Eastern Standard Time. There won't be a live stream for a couple of weeks while I'm away on holidays, but we'll be back in full force at the start of October. As always, I hope you found this interesting, and if you have any thoughts at all, please let me know in the comments below. Until the next time I see you, good luck with everything you're doing, and have a good one.